Welcome back to Think Thrice Problem Solving. Today we're going to be solving another Putnam exam problem. So let's take a look at it. So our problem today is problem B1 from the 2021 Putnam exam. And it paraphrased, it says, what is the probability that a tile randomly dropped on a tile floor does not cover any corners? Okay, so we're saying this tile right here, so the purple tile, we drop it from the sky and it's going to land somewhere on a tile floor. And we need to make sure that when it lands, it doesn't cover any corners. So you notice that the tile's covering a corner here. It's not covering this corner, but it is covering the other one. So essentially what we want to happen is when we drop the tile, we want it to look like this guy on the right, where I have all four of my corners still exposed, so my tile itself is only covering up some edges along the sides. Okay. So that's our goal. Our goal is to find the probability that a randomly dropped tile drops down and doesn't touch any corners. And this might look simple, but you're going to find that it's very complicated if you try to do it yourself. So go ahead and pause the video if you'd like to give it a try. Give it a few minutes. Otherwise, let's go ahead and jump into our solution. Okay, so to get started, what I'd like you to do is imagine that we drop a tile and for the start, Let's pretend we're dropping it so that the center of the tile is in the center of our phone right here. So let's pretend I drew that a little better. Let's go ahead and redraw that. So we're going to get the center of our tile to be located right in the middle there. So we're going to come down, over, up, and over. Okay. That's a little bit better. So we want our tile to be centered right in the middle. Um, so we're dealing with probability. So what I want you to imagine is that if I was to just put this tile on the floor here, I would be able to move it a little bit and still have it be on the, uh, the floor itself. So let's go ahead and make some assumptions here. So I'm gonna assume that the length of my tile here is two. So that's just something I'm going to do. We'll talk about why a little bit later. For the tile here, I'm going to be assuming that it's at an angle theta with a horizontal axis. Okay, so we'll just say my x direction is right, my y direction is up. So I have some theta, which is an angle theta from the horizontal axis. So I could move this tile, basically if I move it in this direction, I can move it a distance A. And because I placed my tile exactly in the middle, due to symmetry, my distances that I'd be able to move in the other directions are also going to be that same distance A. So I know I drew it poorly, but those are all the same distance A. So essentially, if I have this tile that's in the middle of my tile, uh, floor, and I shimmy it around a little bit, I can basically create a box where I can move the center of my tile, if it's oriented at this angle, anywhere within this box, where I have a box where each side is 2 way. Okay, so I have this box in the middle. And essentially what we're going to say is the, at this given angle, so at the angle uh, given, our probability that we're going to be able to uh, land within a given square is going to be equal to the area that I'm allowed to move my tile, so that area within the bounds, so I'm going to call that my little tile purple area here, divided by the total area of the tile, which would be this entire area here if I was to give the whole thing. Okay, I'm going to get rid of that because it's kind of nasty, kind of clutters up the picture. Okay, so that area valid over the area total. And because this every single tile on the tile floor is the same, I can, without loss of generality, I can use this for the entire tile floor. Okay, so 
at my given angle, I now have a formula that I can use to figure out what the probability is. So what I need to do now is figure out what is the probability of my valid area for a given angle. All right. So the next thing we're going to do um, is we're going to, our big question here is how are we going to find A? So how do I calculate that little a value? Okay, so let's go ahead and move down here and let's go ahead and redraw our picture. So once again, we're gonna have our tile. Once again, it's a terrible drawing. Okay, and it's centered in the middle. So what I want you to look at is if I was to create a vector. So let's create a vector that goes from the center of my uh, tile to the corner. All right, and then we also have our angle theta that goes out here. Then the distance A that I'm able to move this, if I was to extend this line outward, we notice that if I was to project, so I'm looking up from over here, if I was to project this line down, then the difference between those two lines, so the distance from here to here, let me redraw that real quick, the distance between here and here is going to be my distance A. And I already know what, how big my tile is, so my tile's length is 2. So if I want to calculate that distance A, A is going to be my total uh, tile length, or uh, sorry, half my tile length. So it's going to be um, the projection of this vector, which I'll call V, onto my vector, which I'll call u, which we'll kind of figure out in a second. And we're taking the magnitude of that. Time, uh, plus or sorry, uh, minus the uh, half the size of my tile. So minus one, because we said our tile had a size of two. Okay, so this is now how we're going to go about calculating the size of uh, A. So how much we can move it in a given direction. Okay, so this is important. We're going to be thinking about this a little bit more as we move forward. So the next thing I want to kind of build on is I'd like to take a look at this vector U. So if I, once again, I have my tile. I'll draw it a little bit more cocked here. Okay. Um, and it's at some offset angle. So if I was to draw this angle, if I make it a unit vector, then the sides of my triangle are going to be cosine theta and sine theta. So this vector right here is going to be in the direction of cosine theta, sine theta. And the magnitude of that vector is going to be 1. Okay, so in order to get my projection, all I need to do is now to get the magnitude of this projection onto this vector u. I can just take my vector v dot product with my vector u. Okay, uh, my vector v, it's easy to figure this guy, so remember this is a length of one, this is a length of one, so my vector v is gonna be one, one, and my vector u is gonna be cosine theta sine theta. So now I have 
my projection, which is going to be cosine theta plus sine theta. So this is going to be the length of the vector going from the center out to this point. So what we've just calculated is going to be the length of that vector. So now what we need to do, so once again, let's remember our goal. So the reason that we were doing that is so that we can create this little picture here. And we want to know how much we can move around in our central box. So each side of this is 2a. And now we know that our distance here is going to be once again that distance and we want to know what a is so we want to know what is this distance a that I can move so we use that equation we wrote a little bit above where a is the projection minus 1 so to calculate our distance a we're going to take the magnitude of that projection we're going to subtract 1 so a is just going to be cosine theta plus sine theta minus 1 and now we're almost there. So this area of my valid triangle, so the area of the valid tri uh, square, sorry, that we wanted to calculate is going to be 2a squared, which is going to be 2 cosine theta plus 2 sine theta minus, one, uh, minus 2 quantity squared. So now we're in a pretty good position. So remember that we wanted to, what we found earlier is that the probability for a given angle is going to be my area valid over my area total. And my area total is going to be 2 squared, which is 4. So this probability now is going to be pulling out the 2, I get 4 cosine theta plus sine theta minus 1 squared divided by 4. So I have the probability for a given angle. Okay, so here's where I might lose some folks. Okay, so we have, what we've now done is we've calculated the area uh, valid, the valid area divided by the total area for a given angle. So this is only when we have the angle theta. So since we have a square tile up here and we have symmetry, if I was to go from theta equals 0 up to theta equals pi over 4, it would be the exact same symmetrically as going from uh, theta equals pi over 2 to theta over pi over uh, pi equals uh, 4. Pi over 4, sorry. So we'd have basically doing the exact same thing. So because of symmetry, what we're going to do is we're going to integrate. So what we're doing is we're taking it for, we're going to generalize and we're going to say for a given theta. So if we integrate this from 0 to pi over 4, so as pi over 4, remember, is 45 degrees. So from 0 to 45 degrees, I'm going to integrate cosine theta plus sine theta minus 1 squared d theta. Okay, And what that's going to give me is I'm going to be taking the probability for one angle, um, and I'm just going to keep doing that for all of my given angles. So in order to make this a probability density function, I need my total probability. So let's say that the probability was 1 all the time. My total probability can only be 1. So the maximum has to be 1. So in order to get that, I need to multiply by 4 over pi here. Okay, so what I'm going to call this guy is this is a normalizing factor.
And this is in order to make this guy a valid, uh, so specifically this guy in here, a valid probability density function. Okay. Okay. So now what we're going to do is I have developed my equation here. So now if I integrate over all the possible angles, so we set up our equations based on a given angle, and now we're saying, what if our angle was any of these values? Let's add all those up. So let's add up the probability here, plus the probability here, plus the probability here, and we'll get that total. So now it becomes a pretty basic integration problem. So let's go ahead and integrate this. So we're going to get 4 over pi times the integral from 0 to pi over 4 times sine squared of theta plus cosine squared of theta plus 1 minus 2 cosine theta minus 2 sine theta minus 2 sine theta cosine theta d theta. All right, so that whole thing uh, is what we're integrating. So let's go ahead. We can do a few things to simplify. So first, these two guys from our trig identities become 1. Uh, this guy over here to the far right will become sine of 2 theta. And now we can rewrite our, input, our integral, slightly simplified. And we're going to get 2 minus 2 cosine theta minus 2 sine theta minus 2 sine, or minus sine 2 theta, sorry. d theta, which is going to give us now 4 over pi times 2 theta minus 2 sine theta plus 2 cosine theta minus 1 half uh, cosine 2 theta d theta and that whole thing is going to be evaluated from 0 to pi over 4. Uh, let me just double check my math here. 2, two, two minus 2 cosine theta. Ah, so yeah, that was a sign error. So this would be, it should be minus and this should be plus. Okay. Uh, and that d theta is gone as well. So the whole point of integrating, right? Okay. So now we have our answer here. So let's go ahead and rewrite this. We're going to get pi over 4. And then we're going to evaluate it pi over 4. So we're going to get 2 pi over 4 minus uh, 2 sine of theta. So sine of pi over 4 is going to be root 2 over 2 plus 2 times cosine of pi over 4, which is root 2 over 2, uh, plus 1 half cosine of 2 theta, which is 1, or which is 0. So that quantity minus, evaluated at 0, we're going to get 0 minus 0 plus 2 um, plus 1 half. Uh, let me relook at this sign here again. Oh, sorry, this should be a plus. This should be a plus. This should be a minus. I was correct before. So this is going to be a minus down here. I apologize for that. OK. Um, so now we evaluated that whole thing. And our ultimate answer here is going to be, boy, I messed up that a little bit, 4 over pi. OK. OK, so the, I'm going to end up getting 2 from these two guys. And I'm going to get minus, and uh, over here I have three halves, 
times 4 over pi, which is going to give me 6 over pi. And if I calculate that, what I end up getting is 9.01% approximately. So what it turns out is if I'm randomly going to drop a tile onto a tile floor, then there's approximately a 9% chance that that tile will land so that it's not covering any of the corners of the tile. Okay. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate you working through that problem with me. Sorry for the minor uh, errors that we corrected in the end, but um, if you have your own problem that you'd like us to work through, please submit it and I'll go ahead and uh, make a video. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Otherwise, as you're working through your problems on your own, think once, think twice, and think thrice. Have a great day.